pray one more time. Our Father in heaven, we humble ourselves, Lord. We are not worthy to speak your word. I don't know your children, Lord, your daughters, where they are in the spiritual life, how fast they can take us, how heavy they can uh, take the truth, Lord. So please guide me, Lord, and guide my friends as we uh, give our testimonies. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In just name we pray. Uh, in the great controversy between Jesus Christ and Satan, ayan po, uh, of course, Satan is angry, God is love, uh, Satan is about disobedience. God is, Jesus is about obedience. And there are three things that Satan is questioning in the great controversy. God's law, God's character, and God's government. And Satan is full of his opinions. I think, I think, I think this is better. I think God has his rules, God has his government, God has his character, but Satan is insinuating. And Satan is self-exalting because he was beautiful, he was talented, he was uh, opinionated, and he was the top officer of all the angels. So that was what happened in the Great Controversy. It says in the uh, Great Controversy book, leaving his place in the immediate presence of God, Lucifer went forth to diffuse the spirit of discontent among the angels. So he is talking about discontent. Working with the mysterious secret, secrecy and for a time concealing his real purpose under an appearance of reverence for God, he endeavored to excite dissatisfaction concerning the laws that governed heaven. So, ang sabi ni Lucifer, Suguro, yung laws may counting kailangan baguhin. Uh -huh. Intimating that they imposed an unnecessary restraint. Masyado namang maraming rules dito sa langit. That was what Lucifer said. Since their natures were holy, he urged that angels should obey the dictates of their own will. So this is Lucifer's position in heaven. Since we were all created perfect, why do we need laws? Why do we need rules? O nga naman, no? Kung perfect yung angels, why do we have laws? That's the statement in the Great Controversy, page 495. He sought to create sympathy for himself by representing that God had dealt unjustly with him in bestowing supreme honor upon Christ. So, may ingit siya kay Jesus Christ. He claimed that in, that in aspiring to greater power and honor, he was not aiming at self-exaltation, but was seeking to secure liberty for all the inhabitants of heaven, that by this means they might attain to a higher state of existence. So I'm showing you the background of the Great Controversy because we, when we understand the Great Controversy, we understand where we are and what is going to happen and our choices. God in His great mercy bore long with Lucifer. He was not immediately degraded from His exalted station when He first indulged the spirit of discontent. Not even when He began to present His false claims before the royal angels. Long was He retained in heaven. Again and again He was offered pardon on condition of repentance and submission. Such efforts as only infinite love and wisdom could devise were made to convince him of his error. The spirit of discontent had never before been known in heaven. Lucifer himself did not at first see whether he was drifting. Hindi alam ni Lucifer na nalalayo na pala siya. So he was himself uh, deceived by his own ideas. But as his dissatisfaction was proved to be without cause, Lucifer was convinced that he was in the wrong. Also, nalaman pala niya ang mali siya. That the divine claims were just and that he ought to acknowledge them as such before all heaven. Had he done this, he might have saved himself and many angels. Had he, had, he had not at this time fully cast off his allegiance to God. Though he had forsaken his position as covering cherub, yet if he had been willing to return to God, acknowledging the Creator's wisdom and satisfied to fill the place appointed him in God's great plan, he would have been reinstated in his office. So, na-disciplina pala si Lucifer. Hindi na siya yung covering cherub, pero nandun pa rin sa langit. But, hindi siya nagsisi. Pride forbade him to submit. He persistently defended his own course maintained that he had no need of repentance and fully committed himself in the great controversy 
against his maker. So that is the making of uh, Satan. While instilling discontent into the minds of the angels under him, he had artfully made it appear that he was seeking to remove dissatisfaction. When he urged that the charges made in order and God's, uh, he urged that changes be made in the order and laws of God's government. O nga, sabi niya, the God's government needs to be changed. God's laws needs to be changed. That is his suggestion. It was under the pretense that these were necessary in order to preserve harmony in heaven. So that we will not quarrel, let's change God's laws. Wow, very dangerous guy. He had sought to falsify the word of God. So the word says something, but he wants to say something. And had misrepresented his plan of government before the angels, claiming that God was not just in laying laws and rules upon the inhabitants of heaven. That in requiring submission and obedience from his creatures, he was seeking merely exhortation of himself. So, Therefore, according to Lucifer, oh no, no. Therefore, it must be demonstrated before the inhabitants of heaven as well as all the worlds that God's government was just, that his law was perfect. Satan had made it appear that he himself was seeking to promote the good of the universe. The true character of the usurper and his real object must be understood by all. He must have time to manifest himself by his wicked works. Yeah. That's why there is the great controversy of 6,000 years which we are included with. The discord which his own course had caused in heaven, Satan charged upon the law and government of God. So sabi ni Satan, kaya tayo nagkakagulo dito sa langit dahil yung batas ng Diyos masyadong mahirap. Yan po ang sabi. All evil he declared to be in the result, the result of the divine administration. <laughs> Grabe si Lucifer. Sabi niya, kaya tayo nagkakagulo dito sa langit dahil sa batas. Nako, muna pala na talaga ito. He claimed that it was his own object to improve upon the statutes of Jehovah. Meron akong mas magandang, ano, a constitution, sabi ni Lucifer. He reiterated his claim that angels need no control, but should be left to follow their own will, which would ever guide them right. He denounced the divine statutes as a restriction of their liberty and declared that it was his purpose to secure the abolition of law. Naku. That freed from the restraint, the hosts of heaven might enter upon a more exalted, more glorious state of existence. Thou, sabi ni Satanas. With one accord, Satan and his host threw the blame of their rebellion wholly upon Christ, declaring that if they had not been reproved, they would never have rebelled. <laughs> Kung hindi daw sila sinaway, hindi daw sila magre-rebelde. Ang galing ng logic ni Satanas, no? Ang Diyos pa ngayon ang may kasalanan. Bakit sinaway? Kung hindi ninyo sana kami sinaway, hindi sana nagkaroon ng rebellion sa langit. Ganun ang sabi niya sa Great Controversy, page 499. Thus, stubborn and defiant in their disloyalty, seeking vainly to overthrow the government of God, yet blasphemous leads, claiming to be themselves the innocent victims of oppressing power, the arch rebel and all his sympathizers were at last banished from heaven. The same spirit that prompted rebellion in heaven still inspires rebellion on earth. Satan has continued with men the same policy which he pursued with the angels. His spirit now reigns in children of disobedience. Like him, they seek to break down the restraints of the law of God and promise men liberty through transgression of its presence. Reproof of sin still arouses the spirit of hatred and resistance. When God's messengers of warning are brought home to the conscience, Satan leads men to justify themselves and to seek the sympathy of others in their course of sin. Instead of correcting their own errors, they excite indignation against the reprover as if he were the sole cause of difficulty. Parang, bakit kasi sinabi mo pa yan? Kaya, kanil kakagulo. From the days of righteous Abel to our own time, such is the spirit which has been displayed toward those who dare to condemn sin. But there's another statement which says, we should call sin by its right name. But the eternal one himself proclaims his character, the Lord God, merciful! Mabuti na lang may merciful. And gracious, long-suffering. This is our only hope, friends. All of us are sinners. 
and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. So God is fair. He is very merciful, forgiving, but He will not clear the guilty. What is the great test? I know I have to speak fast because you are taking tests this week. But there is also a great third test. The Sabbath will be the test of loyalty. For it is the point of truth, especially controverted. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve Him. So the Sabbath is a test. There is another test. It's called the food test. For example, Adam and Eve, they, did they succeed or did they fail the food test? Fail. How about Jacob and Esau? Who failed? Esau? Right. How about the Israelites and Mana? Sorry. Eh? How about Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar? Oh, Daniel is a good example, right? How about Jesus and Satan? Okay, Jesus uh, succeeded in the test. I don't know why. Every time there is something controversial, food is very important. You have to deny yourself. So everybody who denied themselves from, from this uh, food succeeded. Everybody who lasted on food, they all failed, right? Also the Israelites and the quail. And so many in the Bible. So, food test is hard. Sabbath test is the great test. If you combine food test and Sabbath test, it is big, big, big test, right? That's why very hard. This is the most terrible topic I have ever discussed. Food test plus Sabbath test equals Sabbath cooking. Kasi pagkain niya ni. Ang hirap. That's the most terrible thing to discuss, really. I am afraid to discuss. But we have uh, the truth. So what is our reference? In a test, we have reference, we have notes. First of all, the most important tell, uh, reference is the Bible. Everything else is nothing. The spirit of prophecy, so if somebody reads the Bible, and we affirm our reading of the Bible, the spirit of prophecy. Of course, we have an Adventist.org, our official church website. We have Adventist Biblical Research, our scholars who do Biblical Research. And we have the General Menstrual Association book on fundamental beliefs. And then came out. Pedi Mahuangam. Thank you, Pope. So we, are, we have also references that are not uh, very nice references. For example, unofficial explanations. Some people will say like this, like this, but if you re re research the documents, they cannot find the, their excuses. Some, oh, some PhDs will write uh, booklets, but their explanation contradicts the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Some people will present forum uh, presentations in forums, because the church manual says for, uh, forum not pulpit. Ang sinasabi lang sa pulpit, yung sigurado. Yung hindi kasigurado sa theology, dun mo sa theological forum pre-present. Magtawanan lang kayo dun, kung tama o mali. And excuses. So if we do not uh, base our theology on excuses, we do not base our theology on practices, we do not base our theology on practicality, we do not base our theology on convenience, we do not base our theology on emotions and feelings. Those are dangerous grounds to base our... our, uh, our but we base... Praise the Lord, there are positive examples. So I have invited Ayas, uh, my friends here, to give positive examples of what to do. But I have a question. Which one do you want to know first? The things that are in the documents or the examples? The examples. examples. Okay, I just come. Uh, I want to just show something in these slides. Thank you, Ayas. Yeah? Uh, as you see here, uh, God doesn't contradict himself. When he said, do not cook, he is not uh, contradicting himself. The law that Jesus was saying, the law about getting grains, is not from God. It is the policies that the priests over implemented so that they will not, uh, the things about walking a number of steps, that's not from God. That's from the 
Pharisee. So you have to di differentiate what is the clear, the settler, and what are the Pharisees of the Pharisees. That's why Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees of the Pharisees. I just want to point out one more thing. Uh, we are not talking about Ellen G. White prohibits, uh, clearly prohibits uh, cooking, but he says also that it is not God's will that his children eat cold food, therefore we should warm. There is a difference. Since Ellen G. White prohibits cooking and Ellen G. White promotes warming, there must be a difference between warming and cooking. Because Ellen G. White cannot contradict himself also if he is uh, from uh, God. So that is the explanation uh, about those uh, seemingly contradicting uh, statements that seem you, you might you might uh, see in the in the text. Okay, so the, there is a difference between reference of the law. There is thus says the Lord, but there is thus says the Pharisee also. So Jesus was rebuking the thus says the Pharisee uh, laws and uh, also this uh, regarding cooking uh, heating. Heating is only an E.G. Uh, e. White says you can heat, but uh, the Bible, Spirit of Prophecy, Adventist or Adventist uh, Biblical Research are all aligned with cooking. But heating is, uh, Ellen White permits uh, heating of food. And there is a condition when heating. It says, in cold weather. So I investigated the weather in the Sinai Peninsula and the weather in the Promised Land. Ellen G. White says, the weather in the Promised Land, they Actually, there's another verse in the Bible which says, you, not, you cannot kindle the fire. Thus saith the Lord. But Ellen G. White says it was relaxed in the promised land because of the weather conditions. So I checked the weather conditions in Canaan. It's very cold, really, like Baguio weather. I checked the weather conditions in the... It goes to negative 10. I checked the weather conditions in the Sinai, around Sinai. It's Filipino weather. That's why they were prohibited from kindling. So you can warm in in a Canaan weather, but in a Filipino weather, same with Can uh, Canaan Peninsula, that is what I saw in the text. That's why there are things that are seemingly contradiction, but we, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't contradict itself. There is a way to understand both as correct. So that is that. Thank you, Ayas. We will uh, uh, now go to Okay, the next testimony okay, please get her. Our next testimony is from Tanya Zaitz. She, I want to tell her story, but let her tell her story herself. Uh, where are you from? What country? I'm from Ukraine, Eastern Europe. Uh, I was converted uh, into a gay church when I was a teenager. My mom and me came to church together, and uh, I think from the I don't know, the first Sabbath, we found out that we um, Adventists do not cook on Sabbath. And it was accepted, and uh, we started to follow these rules, law. And uh, so we do not cook on Sabbath in my country, and also in Russia, that is very close to my country, we are neighbors, we do not cook on Sabbath also. Uh, I studied in Adventist college in uh, Russia, and uh, it wasn't even a question because on uh, Friday in the afternoon we got the pa package of food and it also included noodles of instant noodles so you just uh, boil the water and you put it inside and uh, that was our food for Sabbath and uh, also instant out meal so we never cooked on Sabbath and uh, also when I was already back home to Ukraine and I worked from early morning until late sunset. Uh, so we used to cook on, uh, to prepare food for Sabbath on Thursday evening. So we knew that on Thursday, uh, when we come back home, it was around 7 p.m., 8 p.m., we knew that we must cook today because tomorrow I work until sunset, so I won't be able to cook on Friday evening. And we kept uh, food in the fridge. So, and it wasn't the question. But we also like to eat delicious food. So we bake everything only before sunset. And uh, while I'm here, I came here last August. I do not cook on Sabbath, and though I do not have fridge here. 
And I'm not starving on Sabbath. I try to cook uh, before sunset, and I keep, usually it is uh, soup, and also I make salad on Sabbath already. So uh, every morning on Sabbath I heat soup to keep it preserved, and I come back home uh, after the worship, and then I eat my food, and also probably some snacks which I can get ready before uh, sunset. Thank you. Our next uh, living example is uh, Jacob Bayona. This guy is great preacher also. If you need great preacher, just invite this guy. I am actually properly oriented about what will happen in this evening. So, may I request water? Because okay. I mean water. A water, water. Because this topic is um, heavy for everybody. Yeah. Okay, why he is requesting water? Because we have to hurry up. I want to go right into the... You know, I have been hearing this uh, truth from my friend, and I myself have been criticizing him. Because this is terrible new truth. It rebukes us. I was criticizing him. Oh, that bread you are eating is cooked or something. But as I did research, you know, if you want to do research, I, I know a pastor who is also a lawyer, who is also an accountant, who has never lost a case in, church, in, in court. What he does, when there is an issue, he researches all positive and he researches all negative. And then he concludes. So I research all positive about, the, about Sabbath cooking. I research all negative. You know what I found? I grew up in an Adventist school. I was taught all the excuses, but I cannot find, find in official documents the excuses. They are just uh, sabi sabi. God has not permitted them to be written down and voted upon by the committees. So our our role is to educate. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob. I am in COE department. Um, it was a eye-opening, sublime evening to everyone. Because I believe and this is my first time to share this. Yeah. Um, what will I share is not in the purpose of bragging myself or my accomplishments. It is the purpose of uh, educational purposes. And uh, in a higher sense, on a conversion to everyone. Um, the truth is truth. And when we hear the truth, this will convert us. No? Um, before going to Sabbath cooking, I want to share a text found in Nehemiah 10 verse 31. It says, As for people of the land who bring merchandise or grain to sell on Sabbath day, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. We will forego planting crops and we will cancel debts during every seventh year. So, when I am reading the Bible, when I discover truth, I literally obey it. Before, I'm an obnoxious person asking, Saan mo makikita ang talata? And there come a time that the Lord will give me the text and obey it. Before, I am... Uh, we ako pag Sabbath, but until I found this, uh, to sell on Sabbath day, we will not buy for them. So, regarding Sabbath cooking, I think there is a prayer to sit. Who is a health reformer here? May I see those hands? I mean, vegetarian. Yes, there's vegetarian. That is the prerequisite, Sir Winnie, for me, uh, for my personal conviction. Before you uh, obey, follow, you must be first a healthy former before you not cook on Sabbath day. 
Um, cooking nuts on Sabbath day uh, needs killing yourself. No? I mean, denying yourself. I mean, dying daily. When you die daily, it takes faith. Faith is the substance of things so for which is not unseen. When you say substance, it is real. It is the actuality of existence of a substance. When you say faith, example, uh, faith, you believe that you will grab that diploma. That is faith. That is faith. That is literally Faith. When you believe something, that is faith. That is the substance. It is concrete. You will see it. You can manipulate it. That is faith. So, cooking nuts on Sabbath day takes faith. No? Takes faith. And that is how I overcame not to cook on Sabbath day for almost a year. It is detailed to my mind when Sir... Win Pasamba spoke on putting Kahoy Church. Isang taon na yun, sir, no? When I hear that, wow! So, Sabbath cooking is not allowed on Sabbath day. So, uh, we prayed to God. My brother is Faith Bayona and Christine Bayona. And um, it's, it is not actually ha uh, easy. It is really hard because we are used to cook on Sabbath. And I love cooking. I love cooking. Um, uh, on Friday, we will buy cornflakes, four liters of soya milk, and kamote, and white corn, and peanut butter, and loaf bread. That is how it works on us. I don't know to you. But it is really uh, hard actually. It takes uh, faith. So for almost a year, no, for almost a year, this is our lifestyle every Sabbath day. But as for us, sometimes we fast on Sabbath. So nakakatibid kami ng pera. Nakakatibid kami ng pera. So that is how the Lord did us. Thank you, Paul. You need more examples, so we want to go to the, the hard truth. Because if you need more, more examples, I'll read very fast and then go to the hard truth. Which, which one do you want? Hard truth? Okay, you have enough examples. But I want to show you the examples. <laughs> In Oaklaw University, cafeteria cooks order viand. You know, the, the examples are not perfect, but somehow they will lead to the, you know, to to better obedience. They cook the viand, except the rice. They still cook the rice. How how did I find find out? I accidentally went to the International Student Services Conference with all your deans and assistant deans at IAS in 2014. And the president of Um Club University said they avoid cooking the viand. And on the same year. You know, God is really restoring, in my observation, God is restoring the truth to his church because it comes from the leaders now. It used to come from small people. And Pastor Sinaga, SSDM, and Associate Minister and Secretary, says in the 2014 IAS Asian Theological Forum, he was the our worship speaker, he just agreed that Sabbath or preparation of food should be done before Sabbath, which is in the Adventist uh, website. And then when I was teaching Sabbath school at PIC, Mam Pa is the, the wife of Dr. Pa is, Vice President for Student Service said, Win, come. Your teacher in high school, she was my teacher in high school, Kumam Abla, he said, when she retired, she went as a missionary to some island, and then she was the cafeteria matron. They tried to avoid cooking on Sabbath, they put the things under the ground, and in the morning it was still uh, warm. And when I preached in Puting Kahoy, uh, Vendor Sadur said, that's what the, my grandparents do also. I thought that the missionaries forgot to tell this truth to the Philippines. Because uh, the people in the U.S., they know it. In the books, it's there. But Filipinos, we are all disobedient. So maybe the missionaries did not tell us. But I found out that all people know. Therefore, we just forgot. No wonder the fourth commandment starts with, remember. 
in cafeteria or unspecified institutions said we can avoid if we have big refrigerator. Oh, Jacob Bayo is there. And the elder of Putinka said, also in our province before, we know how to do that. And some Jews said, we use the slow cooker. Dan Bison says, we prepare everything, we put in the rest, and we find it a blessing. Jared Tumit says, fasting, rap. Atipid pa kayo, sabi ni Jacob. And I have a testimony about that one semester I fasted whole Sabbath day. Of course, I saved lot of food. Not only that, it has other side effects. Better side effects. I began speaking so many places. Ryan James, you may say, let's eat fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. You don't need to cook, right? Uh, Mike Jevin Rivera says, use Diami. Joy O says, you, if you cook for many people, you need rest. In many churches, they even avoid washing dishes by using uh, wax uh, paper. In one, okay, that's... In uh, Ch Charis Arospidal, who saw my presentation in uh, YouTube, he, he says, my father did not cook on Sabbath for almost 28 years. So there are people who know how to do this, but they are afraid to talk about it because it's like judgmental. It's very hard truth. But you should not be afraid because the truth. One worker, this is, uh, says, I preach in a, what is it? Muzon. Sabi nung isang AUP worker, Ah, kamote na lang ang lulutuin ko. Tapos nalangin ko sa rep, Ma'am, sabi ko, hindi pwede mainit ka. Malamig kainin. Sabi niya, iwan ako sa kotse. Pagka uma, pagkatanghali, mainit na yun. Sabi ni Raymond, Mundi goes to CBYC, the youth conference in Central Visayas. The caterer really did not want to put on the Sabbath. Dumami yung napakain nila. Ano ba, 300 lang yung hinaga, yung 500 lahat nakakain. Miraculously, I was not there, but everyone who comes from that youth conference tells the same story, including the speakers from the U.S. Mark Paroro says, this uh, businessman, rich businessman, he can do it. He can even avoid taking a bath. That's a question, right? Eligible prohibits cooking, prohibits also taking a bath. Now that's your question. So we should not take a bath. But taking a bath is not prohibited in the Bible. It's not prohibited in Adventist at all. And not prohibited in Adventist biblical research. It's only an E.G. White statement. Therefore, hanap ka lang ng E.G. White statement na pang balik tadun. Ang panusot ko, ganto. Ellen White also says, on the Sabbath, we should make everything as possible for the comfort of those who are sick. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Therefore, I will just say, I am sick. <laughs> I have to comfort myself and my companions by taking a bath. But I have friends who can, not, who can avoid taking a bath for several days. If you can do that without annoying people, you are blessed. But for most of us, we are, just, uh, we are sick. Therefore, we have to take care of ourselves. So I met this president of Wong Club in a uh, second scholar conference here at AUP. I said, Pastor, Doctor, how do you go doing the cafeteria? Do you use big ref? He said, no, we don't have ref. So how is your food not boil? We have a specific Sabbath menu. Ah, what is Sabbath menu? Don't put plenty of tomatoes. You just fry. Because you fry, it will not spoil for many days. Ah, okay. So you have to choose which food you want to cook. And Gandhi said, I can teach you Ayas, this Ayas guy. Uh, I ask Kabaka, in his country, Mana Falls, in a specific Adventist church, you type in YouTube, uh, Angola, Mana, SID. Here is SSD, right? In Angola, uh, in another division, it's SID. The SID media team went to Angola to video the Mana and to taste the Mana. In video, Pastors, the director of the communication department in SID, was tasting video. And you can also check the document in Signs of the Times. Since about 50 years ago, mana has been falling in the Adventist mission stations on Wednesday and on Friday. Therefore, the God of the Israelites is the God of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen? Amen? My auntie said, your grandfather is like you, always telling you to cook on Sabbath. <laughs> so, Rain Valencia says, we just cook beans on Friday. This is from uh, This other guy says, in Indoro, he told his church members, all not... It's, this thing is not only for offshoots, it's for everybody, everyone, so they, they do it. Ma'am De Gracia says, Ma'am Jade Hintai avoids cooking on Sabbath days by fasting. Ito ang matindi, dyan sa Buklod, sabi nila, Sir, dun sa probinsya namin, hindi lang Sabbath cooking na avoid nila. Pati fellowship, area fellowship, kaya nilang hindi mag-cook. Sabi ko, paano yun ma'am? Basta, malaki yung kawa, ganun. Friday, luto na yung lahat para sa maraming maraming tao. I don't know how they do it, but they said, this is Sister uh, Tanya Zaitz from Ukraine. And Mark Tina De Castro says, her grandfather also knows it. 
and PYC uh, tried to do this by uh, specifying what kind of food. Of course, some of the food went uh, spoiled because uh, we were not that ready. It's practice. You, know, you cannot get perfect on the first try. But you try. Prelin says, uh, you, you, if you don't put milk, uh, it will last longer. Okay. PYC, they called, they avoided Sabbath cooking by not having the conference on the Sabbath. They started Sunday to Wednesday. Grocery store, maraming dilata dyan. Yung dilata, kahit ilang buwan. Okay. Five minutes. So what is in the Bible? Exodus 16, 27. Boil, which you will boil. Bake, which seal, which you will say. Seal. What is in SOP? Those who cook food upon the Sabbath violate the fourth commandment and are transgressors of God's law. From EGY Writings, 3SG 253, paragraph 2. On uh, EGY Writings also it says, On Friday let the preparation be completed. See that the clothing, yung plancha, cooking is done. Very clear, cooking is done. Even in camping. And EGY Writings says, We should be as strict in camping as we are in the home. Cooking on the Sabbath should be avoided, but it is therefore necessary to eat cold food. In cold weather, in cold weather, but you know, inside the refrigerator, it's cold weather. So you should warm your food. But you know, our microwave, it has buttons. Cook and warm. I do not press cook on Sabbath. I, saw, I know also your rice cooker has warm and cook. So do not press cook. Warm lamb. Oh, what is in the uh, Adventist.org? Uh, it says in Adventist.org, information, official statements, documents, the buying and preparation of food. Hindi nila nilagay na cooking preparation. Ibig sabihin kasama yung pag chop chop, pag uh, pag ano pa, pag iwa, pag luto. The rendering of clothes should will be completed before sundown Friday. That is our official statement. What is in Adventist Biblical Research? The same thing. The buying preparation of food should be done before. So, kasama yun yung microwave sa preparation. Yan po ang mga official statement natin, just in case you don't know. But we Filipinos, we are uh, transgressors. But the solution is to educate. Really educate. That's why I have collected many examples. Because when you have examples, there is no more excuse. Okay, last. On the Seventh-day Adventist Building of Biblical Exposition 27 Fundamentalist, Doctrines, copyright 1988 by the Ministerial Association of the General Conference. It's a yellow book where we read our fundamental beliefs. It says, on this day, that is a Friday, those who make the family's meal should prepare food for the Sabbath so that during its sacred hours they can also rest from their labor. So, friends, Bible, Spirit of Prophecy, Adventist.org, Adventist Biblical Research, they are all aligned. Very nice. I praise the Lord that they are all aligned. I cannot find the excuses on any of our official documents. Although they are very common uh, around us. So, yun po, um, that's the... If you know any other examples, I'm not looking for excuse. Examples, positive examples, please, we can add. Also, ma'am, also has nice... Do uh, you want to add, ma'am? Or, uh, ma'am has example also. Every time I preach this terrible truth, I'm very afraid. But every time after I preach, somebody says, he has another additional example. So, kala ko hindi na po ako magsasalita. Um, honestly speaking, I am not convicted yet uh, with this uh, kind of matter. Yung Sabbath uh, keeping, not cooking. Yet, I thank the Lord for sending all of you here for us to be aware of this matter. And, alam naman po natin what was happened Last, ano, last Sabbath. Yes, mahirap. Uh, in our part, uh, na ganun yung mangyari during the Sabbath. But then, um, do you know, uh, do you believe that everything happens with a purpose? Yes. Alam niyo ba, that was the, uh, the very first time in my life here in Chrysanthemum Hall na nakita ko po na one Sabbath, halos lahat po tayo maaga sa si church. Amen. Amen? Wow! Alam nyo, ang alam ko lang, ang alam ko lang is, during Sabbath kasi, I have a commitment with the Lord. It is to keep the Sabbath holy, 
And of course, some, there were times in my life that I do fast and prayer. And it is really an amazing thing that during I do fasting and prayer, I never, ever felt hungry throughout uh, the day. Actually, since Friday night up to sundown, hindi ako nagugutom. Yes, I did that. And sana I tried you did. And of course, um, for all of us here, Wag po na, natin isipin na ang bagay na sinabing ito ng ating kapatid is a negative thing for us. I believe that this happened because God has a purpose. That this thing happened because God sent them for us to be aware of this matter. So, hihintayin pa ba natin na kailangan mangyari yung ganung bagay just for us to go to church early? Diba? So, kailangan pa ba natin mangyari yun, yung ganung bagay? So, my point here is, I am not, I am not against with the with Bible standards. Actually, I really love, ano, I really love to learn such kind of matter. Ang ayaw ko lang po mangyari na ngayong aware na tayo sa bagay na iyon is, yung maging isipin natin na yung sabat is gusto natin na huwag magluto. Hindi naman ganun yung gusto kong mayari. Ang akin po is nalaman natin yung katotohanan it's in our commitment to the Lord how we will keep the sabat holy. So I hope and I pray that all of us will have learned something from our speaker and from the testimony. God bless. Actually, I know already uh, that mm, cooking on Sabbath is, is not proper. Because before, when I was in the province, I came from Mindoro, Oriental Mindoro, sir. And uh, when we have a fellowship, mm -hmm. our grandparents cook the food for the Sabbath during uh, Friday morning until afternoon. And everything is prepared. So we they prepared food for 100 of per, per people, and uh, you know what? The food is not spoiled. It's, uh, it's, it's still hot because they put it on the styrofoam, and they put the leaves on the styrofoam before putting the rice inside. And we eat hot rice during Saturday afternoon, and it's delicious. And you know what? I when when I attended the week of prayer, actually the Holy Spirit touched my heart, and I see our uh, every Sabbath here in the, this dormitory, we have difficult people cooking. They are so busy cooking their food during the Sabbath, and I don't want that to happen because uh, our Sabbath starts at mm, Sunday, uh, Friday night until sunset of Saturday. And I believe that we have to dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Not only busy of cooking our food during the Sabbath, and we are always late going to church, and it really touched my heart. And I think this is my responsibility to tell the young people, the young ladies, the young ladies here in this dormitory that we need to focus on the Word of God during the Sabbath day. We need, we need to take time, have meditate uh, during uh, Saturday morning when we wake up. We need to read our Bible, not just only busy on our own, uh, own self, just preparing for the food. Because uh, actually, sir, they, are, they have lots of friends, and during the Sabbath, they have uh, friends to feed. <laughs> and I'm happy for that. We can prepare food in a simple way. I told them I will teach you how. And actually I get a lot of leaves so that we can rock the, the rice. And I think they will like it because it's delicious when you eat uh, rice. When we have camping, sir, uh, hiking, sir, we cook rice and we eat that two days, for two days. And it was not spoiled. So if we are dedicated, we are, we just need to have knowledge about 
prepare our food. But because God has given us wisdom, so we need to practice on keeping the Sabbath because it is for, it is for the Lord, not for us. Thank you. I just want to comment. Oh, I remember Jacob's comment that he was saying that you should be vegetarians before. I will contradict you, my friend, a little bit. Because when the Israelites, when God commanded, do not cook on the Sabbath, he did not yet, you know, cooking on the Sabbath is more, not cooking on the Sabbath is more important than vegetarianism. They were not yet vegetarian by that time. So don't wait to be vegetarian before stopping cooking. Because when they, okay, just that one, I have another, we have another sister Rachel Ibasco, the last uh, testimony, she is from very far place, just to give the testimony. Thank you, Paul. Good evening, Paul. Um, have you experienced being tired? Or shall I say, are you tired? Yes. And if you're tired, what are you looking for? Or some, um, ano yung inaabang-abangan mo talaga? That is? Pagkain. Wow. Okay, for example, once you are tired, or once we are tired from our classes and work, what do you prefer? To sleep or to eat? Sleep. Sleep, right? So, I could relate to that. Meaning to say, if we are from work and from our classes with lots of requirements and things to do, there is something that we are really looking forward to, and that is actually the rest. And I'm here to testify actually about the blessing of Sabbath or observance, not uh, making it as a burden, but treating it as a blessing and a guide from the Lord. Um, the first time I observed um, not cooking during Sabbath was when I joined a medical missionary training. And for me, like a meat eater, and I'm not used to eat, you know, um, a very with a strict time, shall I say, having in-between meals. And then we would be there having the, the rules and regulations that we're not allowed to, to eat during in-between meals. And then I was also surprised to experience there that we would prepare the food before the Sabbath. So meaning to say Friday, Friday morning till afternoon, something like that. And, and the blessing of experience those things made a big impact in my life. In what way? Actually, um, if Kuya Jacob um, loves to cook, I'm the kind of person who loves to eat. Ayan. Sino ba yan? So, merong love, we, we, some of you loves to cook, but I don't know, but majority of us loves to eat, right? But then, you know what? Um, I'm not here to, or rather, those individuals who have shared their testimonies or even pas, um, serving Pasamba, the, Serving, <laughs> um, share this information. We are not here to, you know, to push everything and, you know, to persuade you to do these practices. But we are here to testify that God is at work in every heart of His children. And you know what? No, una talaga, hindi ko talaga gusto yung mga ganong practices. Kasi syempre, pag, alam mo yung paggutom ka, especially kung galing ka sa work or... Pagod ka. During that time, naranasan namin mag, magbubungkal kami, mag-aasarol kami. Naranasan niyo ba yun? Yeah. Diba? At times, you would be really tired for the whole week you're doing that. And then, syempre, pinakaasam-asam mo yung rest, yung Sabbath. Tapos biglang, hindi ka ganun, makakakain ng sobrang daming pagkain. Well, actually, the Lord rebuked me by that time. And even up to this moment. Because the Lord taught me in a way na um, whenever we prepare foods, at times, syempre, gusto natin masatisfy yung needs natin kasi gutom tayo eh. Nandun yung parang sabat na nga lang yung pinaka rest day namin. Tapos kukunin pa yung pinaka, alam mo yung makapagluto ka sana ng masarap na pagkain, di ba? But then, um, one thing I've learned with um, um, sabat preparation, yung hindi magluluto ng sabat, yun yung instead of cooking, It, um, yun yung mag-spend tayo na magkaroon ng communion with the Lord. Not cooking, but more on communing with the Lord. And um, 
it teaches us about temperance and at the same time talking having this sweet conversation with the Lord and personally hindi ko alam kung paano kayo paano ko i-share to pero deep in my heart I'm really con convicted talaga na alam niyo yun, kapag nasa church tayo or bago pa lang magkaroon ng sabat di ba nandiyan yung sa isipan pa lang natin ano kayang iluluto ko ano kayang kakainin ko di ba hindi pa nga natatapos yung speaker excited ka na especially if you 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 prepared a very delicious food you would really look after that food na hindi ka na makaka-concentrate. And actually, the Lord rebuked me in a way na He was telling me, ah, anak, actually, you're robbing me. Yung speaker natin last week, He was telling, what are the things that we are doing when we are on our spare time? But the question is, ano yung ginagawa natin during Sabbath? It's not about, etong mga principles na to, hindi actually, ito yan eh. Yung shinare din po ni, ni Sir at ni, ni Aya, it's not about the you know, becoming legalistic. Pero, um, behind that, ang gusto ipa-emphasize sa atin ang Panginoon, nasa yung puso natin kapag araw ng Sabado? Are we really sincere to have this personal rest with the Lord or just to have physical rest? And the thing is, we usually miss the blessing of Sabbath because we rather spend the Sabbath <coughs> entertaining the appetites of ourselves, the gratifications of what we have, rather than spending time with the Lord in prayer, in reading the Bible. That's why whenever we face another week, ano ba yan? May duty na naman ako, gising na madaling araw, gagawin to, gagawin yan. Meron pang requirements, may exam pa ako. All because, hindi ganun quality yung, yung time natin with the Lord. And so, as I end, this short testimony, I'd like to share Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14. It says here, Isaiah 58, verses 13 and 14, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, yes, Sabbath na naman. And yet, what are the things that we are doing? The holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Hindi lamang po ito tungkol sa pagluluto. Masyado tayo nakapokus sa food actually. Pero at times, yung mga pinag-uusapan daw natin. Verse 14, ito po yung maganda. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And so, upon going here, I'm personally blessed actually because what I can see right now, it's actually a rebuke for me. I'm a full-time student here, pero to see a group of working working scholars here na, alam mo yun, makayana na uh, magkaroon ng self-denial not to cook on, on Sabbath, it's a big rebuke for us. Kayo mas pagod kaysa sa amin. Pero kayo nakakayanan ninyo. And what I can see and testify right now, Chrysanthemum is not actually just preparing for Sabbath, but you are actually preparing for heaven. Amen. So, uh, it is not a suggestion. It is a commandment. Hindi ang 10 suggestions eh. Hindi 10 opinions. It is a commandment. Worship is a command. Remember the Sabbath day. It's uh, one of the ten commandments. In Revelation 14, it is also a command. Worship is a command. It's not a suggestion. So let us all, uh, let me just close with a prayer as we uh, close them. Our Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord, for your children who love the truth more than, them, more than their own self. Who love the truth even if it hurts who love the truth even if it is inconvenient. Who love you, Lord, more than themselves, more than their appetites. Now, Father, please pour your Holy Spirit upon this dormitory, Lord, as you have already. Pour it more, Lord, so that your Holy Spirit might give us the efficiency of following your laws and your commandments. Be merciful to us, Lord, for all our transgressions in the past where we did not know, and even when we knew that we did not know how to obey, Lord. 
Please send us examples, Lord, so that we may learn how to obey, how to follow, how to become like the uh, ladies that you want us to be. You want them to be, Lord. Uh, Father, we praise you for our leaders who have this their positions, their influence by telling the truth. We praise you, Lord, for orchestrating all of these leaders, the laymen, the pe people, the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, for aligning all of them for us just to know the truth, Lord. We believe that you are restoring the truth, Lord, getting ready for heaven because you are going to meet a pure church who follows your commandments according to Revelation 12, who keep the commandments of God. And Father, we depend on you, Lord. We cannot obey without you, Lord. We cannot speak without you, Lord. Only by your power and your by grace, we can overcome our own selves, our sinful selves. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for the promises of overcoming with the strength of the, of Jesus Christ. Thank you for forgiving us from all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.